What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are gonna review the RSL Speedwoofer 12S and oh my goodness, is this a special thing. Um, I tried to capture the behemoth size of this bad boy on camera. I hope it shows up well for you guys. Some of you may have noticed I couldn't even fit the whole thing in the frame. I did my best. This thing is a monster and for 800 bucks, I can't believe that's the price they set for it. If RSL would have set the price for this bad boy at $1,200, I would have given this a 10 out of 10 review. Fantastic, highly recommended. But these guys are not greedy. They said, hey, 800 bucks, that's what we're gonna sell it for. So here we go. Let me throw these main specs on screen so you guys can check that out. I'm gonna tell you about some standout features and there are quite a few of them. Um, and then I'm gonna tell you what it sounds like. We'll do some comparisons, then we'll wrap up the video. So for those of you that don't know, RSL has been known for making one of the best subwoofers under $500. That's the Speedwoofer 10S. I gave that bad boy subwoofer of the year two years in a row. First for the original 10S and then for the 10S Mark II that came out later. That thing is great. If 500 bucks or less is all you have, it's actually 449. Um, that thing is killer. It's a good compact vented 10, whether you're listening to music, movies, or video games, it's gonna get the job done so phenomenally well. But for those of you that said, I want more, I want bigger, here you go, oh my goodness. So, uh, standout features, handy uh, remote control. I thought this was so cool. Um, I like buttons, I like that tactile feel. So let me take you through the remote and what you can control. This thing has four preset DSP modes. I'm gonna take you through them real quick. First, reference mode. That is gonna be the, the least amount of DSP interference. You're gonna have the most uh, extension and all those things, and it's gonna have the in my opinion, the most natural sound. That's where I did most of my listening was reference. I did some in music as well, but reference is gonna be just minimal DSP, just my guess, some safety features are gonna be on, like subsonic filter is my guess. Next is gonna be your movie mode. That's gonna give you a little bump in the 25 hertz region. That's gonna give you some good room rumble effects and things like that. Not that the sub needs a boost there, honestly, but for those of you who want more, you've got your movie mode. Next is the music mode. That gives you a little bit of a boost around uh, 30 to 50 hertz, just to give the sub a little bit better tactile feel, a little bit better note to note distinction for musical bass, which oftentimes is more in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 hertz. And then lastly is the boundary mode, or as I like to call it, the apartment setting. Boundary mode is gonna be fantastic for those of you that live in an apartment, but you know you're not gonna live in an apartment your whole life. You're gonna buy a subwoofer and you, you wanna make sure it's gonna stay with you and grow with you, but at the same time, you do not wanna piss off the neighbors and get a complaint from that leasing office. So you're gonna set this thing to boundary. What boundary is gonna do is gonna start rolling off the bass right after 40 hertz. So it's gonna cut down on a lot of those frequencies that are known to really travel through walls and shake the foundation. You're still gonna have good bass. It's still gonna sound fantastic. It's just not gonna disturb your neighbors as much. The second situation where you might use the boundary mode is some rooms have strong base reinforcement. And while vented subwoofers don't benefit from room gain as much as their sealed counterparts do, they do still benefit from room gain. So if you've got a spot in your room where the sub's gonna go, but you're like, dude, it is way too crazy, there's way too much base, I need to tame this down a little bit, you're gonna also use the boundary mode. So you can also adjust the volume of the sub, which easily is my favorite feature. Um, there's a little LED indicator here that kind of lets you know where you're at. Um, once you start making your adjustments, it comes on. And after you stop making your adjustments, after about 10 seconds, it turns itself off. So it's not distracting, distracting at all. It does come with a grill, whether you've got cats, uh, kids, or a wife that has certain aesthetic tastes and you can't show the driver, you can put the grill on. Um, it's got a custom 12 inch driver that RSL designed in house. Plate amplifier with 500 watts RMS and a cabinet that is very robust. Three quarter inch wood all around, one inch thick MDF on the front baffle and internally braced. This thing is no joke, guys. The rear vent is finished in a kind of a soft touch felt material. I thought that was a nice little aesthetic touch there. So, uh, oh, one last uh, standout feature. This bad boy has built-in bass management. So for those of you that want to high pass to your mains and low pass to your sub and have that perfect crossover point, you could do that with this. You could do it between 30 and 250 hertz, I believe, at a 24 dB slope. 
That's gonna be really handy for those of you that don't have a lot of experience setting up subwoofers. It's gonna make this thing integrate so easy, seamlessly in maybe five or 10 minutes or so. All right, let me tell you what this bad boy sounds like. We'll do some comparisons after that. So, now usually when you put a 12 inch driver in a large cabinet, you get a ton of room rumble, you get a ton of output and just, you know, that rumbly, wet, watery sounding bass at the expense of transient response. Usually, it makes the subwoofer sound very sloppy. That's not what's going on here. RSL has done a fantastic job between designing the driver suspension, the cabinet, and the port tuning frequency in a way that this subwoofer still has very good transient response. And that's whether you're listening to music, playing video games, or watching movies. Note to note distinction was also good. And I'll say this, all the descriptors we wanna to use to describe sound quality, whether it be your uh, you know, note to note distinction, your transient response, your handling of delicate passages, your nuanced details and things like that, I would put in the category of very good. It does a very good job at all of those things. Where it's killer, especially for just 800 bucks, it's huge sense of scale, extremely effortless performance, and strong, thick, and extremely confident bass in those lower frequencies. This is the biggest sub I've had here in this room. And I think a lot of the times when I refer to a subwoofer size, you guys might think I'm talking about just the driver. I'm not, I'm talking about the whole unit because the size matters overall. The cabinet is a very, very, very important factor in a subwoofer's overall design. Guys, if you get the cabinet wrong, I don't care how good your driver is, I don't care how good that plate amp is, I don't care how good its DSP tuning is, if the cabinet isn't designed well, it's not gonna be a good system, it's not gonna sound very good. Those of you that have been doing car audio for many years and have had some custom enclosures built, you know this very well. The cabinet is of paramount importance and RSL knocked it out of the park. So let's do some comparisons so I can help give you some context on how I've just described this thing. But so far, just to be crystal clear, what I'm saying is this. If size is not too much of a concern for you, I don't think you can have a bigger sense of scale. I don't think you can have more confidence, extension, authority, grip and control in those lower frequencies at this price point. I, I think this give you, gives you about as much as you can get and I think that's intentional. Um, Cause again, RSL could have priced this at 1200 bucks. They didn't, they priced it at 800. They wanted to make sure it was the best thing you could get for 800 bucks and they did a pretty good job guys. Um, so let's talk about how it compares to RSL's own Speedwoofer 10S first. The Speedwoofer 10S is a vented 10. This is a vented 12. The 10S is actually a compact sub as well. Despite being a vented sub, it's fairly compact now. Both have very good transient response, but here's the interesting thing. I think, despite being substantially larger, the 12S actually has better sound quality overall. That's what I think. Um, I felt like its transient response was a little bit better. Its note-to-note -note distinction was a little bit better. Um, Start-stop behavior, I might give a slight edge to the Speedwoofer 10S, but it wasn't a big enough difference for me to have any complaints. The substantially more sense of scale, effortlessness, and thickness in the bottom end that the 12S brought to the table was very welcome. And look, the 10S is no slouch. The 10S is very good. But this 12S, if you've been an owner of the original 10S or the 10S Mark II, and you're like, I want an upgrade. I want, I want something a lot more. Like this is not a small upgrade from the 10S. This is a giant upgrade from the 10S, guys. Um, I'll go as far as to say this. Some of you might wonder, hey, you know, for 800 bucks, you know, well, 900 bucks technically, you could get two 10Ss. For 800 bucks, you could get a single 12S. What should you do if you got that much budget? I'd get the one 12S. I really would, because I think it sounds a little bit better with its sound quality and fidelity overall and that effortlessness, scale, and thickness in the bottom end is just so good, I think it's better than having two vented tens. I really do. That would be my choice. Now, if your room has a lot of like room modes and, and issues where you, you, you know, 12 dual subs really will help give you more balanced space, you might prefer having the dual 10 S's, but if a single sub sounds good in your room, I would easily take the single 12 S over a pair of 10 S's. I mean, it is that 
it is that good. And, and again, just to be clear, it's not, this is not a small upgrade. I'm not, it's not like a DAC, right? Like guys, I don't know if you know this, but like what like DACs, like a lot of the times, especially in the like two, $300 price category, the differences between them, it's so nuanced, it's so small. Like the upgrade from like a hundred dollar DAC to a three hundred dollar DAC, even though the three hundred dollar DAC is three times the price, like it's not that big of a difference. It's really not. This is a huge difference compared to the 10s. It's incredible. Okay, um, let's talk about how this compares to the SVS PB1000 Pro. Again, let's keep in mind that is a lot smaller and a hundred dollars cheaper. The RSL Speed Warfare 12s look again being larger. It's going to have a way way bigger sense of scale. It's going to sound a lot more effortless and it's gonna actually have better transient response despite being so much larger. Um, it, I would say the sound quality of the SVS PB1000 Pro is good. I would say the sound quality of the RSL 12S is very good, so it's just a notch above. Now, the PB1000 Pro, if you plugged it in and listened to it, you'd be like, sense of scale is big, extension is strong, thick, and confident. All the things it does, you'd be like, this is good enough, I don't think I need more than this. But then if you plug in the 12S right afterwards, you're gonna go, holy shit, this is giving me a lot more and I like it. And for just a hundred bucks more, I'll leave you with this. If size is not a concern and you have the extra hundred bucks to go for the 12S, it's an easy choice to make guys, easy choice. Um, I, would, I would say the, the comparison of this versus the PB1000 Pro doesn't even really make sense. You would more compare this to something like the PB3000. Um, but that's another story. So um, I'll tell you this guys, as far as other comparisons, my Discord is free and there's a section there titled Nemo FAQ and there's more comparisons listed there. So if you're interested in seeing more comparisons, check out my Discord, it's free. There's a link in the description. You could check that out. Um, let me just think real quick if there's any other comparison I wanna do before we wrap it up. Let me say this. Um, some of you guys still don't understand how important size is. Every now and then, when I review a larger sub, I still get questions like, how does this thing compare to the SVS Micro 3000? Or how does this compare to the Rel T5X? Or like some tiny subwoofer? Guys, let me be absolutely crystal clear. I love tiny subwoofers. They are absolutely amazing. The technology has come very far. And what these really tiny subwoofers can do for how small they are is without a doubt impressive. But they cannot compete with something three, four, five, six times its size. They just can't. A small sub like the Micro 3000, KEF KF60, uh, KC62, Rel T5X, I love all three of those subwoofers. None of them could do what this thing can do. None of them have the sense of scale this RSL 12S has. None of them have even close to the output potential this 12S has. I don't know what the math is, but even duels can't compete with one of these. I don't think three or four can even compete with one of these. One of you smarter guys in the comments can do the math in the, in the comments probably, but I genuinely don't think four LT5Xs or four Micro 3000s or four Kef KC62s will have the output of a single 12S. I, I don't think it would. If I'm wrong, someone tell me, I'm curious. Um, other comparisons, let's see here. Haven't reviewed a lot of vented subs recently. There, there is the Emotiva RS11. I had this comparison planned. Unfortunately, the Emotiva RS11 has been discontinued, um, which is a shame. That was a great sub. It was, and it was very similarly priced at eight hundred fifty-two dollars. Um, I'll do the comparison real quick just for context. But again, that sub's discontinued. Um, subwoofers are similar in price. Again, it's going to be a similar story like the PB1000 Pro. This 12S being so much larger, as good as that Emotiva RS11 was, the 12S just, its sense of scale is tremendous. And, and I hope you've heard me say that a few times now, and I hope it's clicking in your brain what I'm telling you, that the sense of scale, the, the sheer effortlessness and sound power this brings to the table is simply unmatched in this price category. I don't know of a single subwoofer that's $800 or less that brings this tremendous sound power to the table, this tremendous thickness and confidence in the lower frequencies. And again, to be clear, that's whether you're listening to music, watching movies, or playing video games, it doesn't matter. The sound quality is also quite good, which again is a big shocker for such a big sub. So, 
I think that is pretty much everything I wanted to tell you guys about the subwoofer. If you got any questions, ask in the comments below. This YouTube channel does have a free Discord, as I mentioned earlier, feel free to hop in. I will say this though, if you join my Discord, we have moderators, don't be an asshat. Don't try to be a wise ass, don't try to be a tough guy. Definitely don't try to be a know-it-all. No one cares about that kind of stuff. In the Discord, this is the way we all look at it, okay? We treat each other all the same way we would treat like a friend we hadn't seen in a while, right? You might bust their balls a little bit, right? A little bit, but mostly courtesy, right? Mostly respect. We're there to help each other, you know, have more fun with the hobby and stuff like that. So the only thing I'm wondering is RSL gonna give us an in-between model? You know, I wonder, cause like the, the Speedwoofer 10S, nice, good, compact size, high on the wife acceptance factor as far as size goes. And then we have this, which is like essentially like a poor man's PB16 Ultra, you know, and, and uh, with better transient response though, to be honest. Um, absolutely incredible what they've been able to do here. Yeah, look guys, I don't wanna ramble on. Any questions, ask in the comments, ask in the discords. I hope you're having a blessed day. Until next time, later.